CataractCoach.com. Posterior capsulexis and optic capture. So we've got a young child with galactosemia who benefits from this gimbal IOL fixation. Our operating guest surgeon here is Dr. Femi Nafa from Tunisia, and this is a young child with this cataract. So tripan blue dye is very helpful, not just to visualize, but also, remember, it makes the capsule a little bit less elastic. And in this child, it's going to be a very elastic capsule. So viscoelastic is going inside the eye here, and you can see there's that cataract, very characteristic of the disease here. And the rex is not easy to do in a younger person. And so starting it off here, going conservative. You can always enlarge it or spiral it out. I like the technique here. Very nicely done. Just tracing that quite nicely. Now, Howard Gimbel from Canada really had helped us out a lot. He published a paper that explained all different types of sulcus fixation and optic capture, etc. Now, the one we know about or talk about the most is the fixation where you put the haptics in the sulcus and then the optic goes behind the anterior capsule rim. But there are other options as well. And in this case, you're going to see the optic is going to go actually behind the posterior capsule rexus. So a little bit of hydrodissection being done. The nucleus here, of course, is very soft. That's going to come out very easily. As you know, in these children, the PCO rate's very high and very aggressive. And so in very tiny babies, you may even, you'll I'll certainly do a posterior capsulotomy, but also even an anterior vitrectomy primarily, intentionally, to avoid that aggressive PCO. In this patient, however, you're just gonna to need to do a posterior capsular axis to clear that visual axis. So lens comes up very easily. Again, butter soft, just use the IA probe. That's cleaned up quite nicely. So the posterior capsular axis is gonna be done and the optic will be captured. Now you can have, think about this, you can have the optics in the sulcus and then captured behind the posterior axis. You could even have the optics in, the haptics in the bag and then capture the optic behind the posterior capsule axis. There are a lot of different options here. And you can even do reverse pupillary capture, right? So what's happening here is making an opening in the posterior capsule and also injecting some viscoelastic to help put a barrier between the posterior capsule and the anterior hyaloid face here. And now the capsule axis can be torn nice and carefully. That looks very nice. And this is gonna be a very stable fixation for a long period of time for this patient. Now the question is, do you need to adjust any of the IOL calculations for the lens position? Well, think about it. If you're changing the ELP, the effective lens position, you may want to make some adjustments here. We know from straight sulcus placement, if you have the optic in the sulcus, that's more anterior, so we need to lower the IOL power, right, to get the same post-op refract result. Similarly, if you're going to place this optic behind the posterior capsular axis, it's going to be deeper in the eye. Now the eye wall is farther from the cornea, closer to the retina. Therefore, we need a little bit higher eye wall power in this eye. And so here comes the lens. Looks like a three-piece acrylic lens. It's going to be delivered nicely here. And let's look carefully to see about placement and positioning of it. There's the leading haptic coming out. Looks like it's going under the iris, so in the sulcus. And then here's the optic. It looks like a six millimeter acrylic optic. And then the trailing haptic. Let's see, dialed in nicely. And it's going to go also into the sulcus. So there it is. And now the optic can be buttonhole captured. You can go behind the anterior capsule rim, or even, like in this case, going a little deeper, placing it behind the posterior capsule axis. So you need to have a rexus of about four and a half or five millimeters. Five is ideal. If you have a baby-sized rexus, it's going to be tougher. Now look at the red reflex. You can see that exactly. So that optic is very secure now behind the posterior capsular rexus. Incision can be sealed up. You can take out the viscoelastic. In this case, will be done shortly. So great learning case here. Glad to know this patient, patient had a beautiful outcome. A little triamcinolone is also very helpful in these young patients because they get a lot of inflammation, so I'd even put extra. And you may want to even suture, there you go, suture the incision. I like it, great idea. Now you can use 10 nylon if you think the patient's cooperative and you can bring the patient back to the clinic and at the slit lamp remove it later. If you think the patient's gonna be less than cooperative, maybe you can even use a 10 vicryl because that'll dissolve on its own and then um, come out naturally. So all depends on your situation here. So nice little X suture there, secure outcome. And yeah, you definitely want to put in um, some 
antibiotics in this patient, as well as the steroids, because this patient may not be too compliant with post-op drops. And so not even suturing the presentesis, that's a great idea. Beautiful case. Thank you, Dr. Nafa, for submitting it. And thank you guys for watching cataractcoach.com.